Imagine a world where mosquitoes no longer transmit deadly diseases, fruits and vegetables sustain the growing world population, and bacteria cure chronic pain. Now stop imagining and look at the world around you. All of these products are real and have the potential to change the world if implemented. This is why it is important to take a step back to look at who decides if these products are approved and implemented in the world. I'm Swasti, and today I want to talk with you guys about the U.S. regulatory guidelines that exist for products created through biotechnology techniques. FDA stands for Food and Drug Administration, but regulates more than just food and drugs. They regulate manufacturing, processing, and distribution of things like medical devices, animal and veterinary products, tobacco products, radiation emitting products, and even cosmetics. The next regulatory agency, EPA, stands for Environmental Protection Agency. When you hear this, you may picture someone hiking up a mountain, fishing, or walking trails in the forest to evaluate damage, but the EPA does much more. This agency evaluates products such as chemicals, pesticides, pollutants, and other biotechnology products that are being proposed to be implemented in the environment. The last primary regulatory agency is the USDA, which stands for the United States Department of Agriculture. The USDA regulates the manufacturing, processing, and distribution of food, natural resources, and nutritional resources. They also assist in regulating agriculture, rural development, and related public policies. With such a wide range of responsibilities, it is important that these agencies work together. Where does synthetic biology and biotechnology fit in these agencies? The FDA, EPA, and USDA work together to regulate products that may fall in more than one category. For example, in the combined category of genetically engineered plants and food for humans, the USDA will look at regulations if the plant poses a pest risk. The EPA will regulate plant protectants to ensure that chemicals produced by the plant will not cause adverse effects environmentally and for public health. And the FDA will ensure that the safety of human food is not compromised. There are many cases of agency collaboration, which is why it is important for these agencies to cooperate well and work together. The FDA, EPA, and USDA regulate GMOs and do analyses to determine the risk these may pose to the environment or public health. But what is a GMO? GMO stands for Genetically Modified Organism, and are organisms that have had their DNA altered through genetic engineering. Many factors are taken into account when GMOs and biotechnology products are being evaluated for release into the environment. The FDA, EPA, and USDA evaluate a variety of aspects for biotechnology products, which include the ingredients in the product, the place the product will be implemented, the amount, frequency, and timing of the product use, and the storage and disposal practices. In addition to this, these agencies take into consideration the harm that residues from a biotechnology product could cause to the environment and to public health. The EPA requires sufficient data to support that there is little to no risk for environmental damage. The FDA requires data to determine that the product will not cause harm to humans and animals. And the USDA requires data to show that the product will not cause adverse effects on livestock and agricultural products. If the product is approved, the agencies will also ensure that proper labeling is applied to the products if applicable to the situation. It is also important to remember that many of the guidelines are derived from the laws. So when looking to apply for the approval of a biotechnology product, the laws for a specific product are important to take into consideration. One genetically modified product that was not approved for over a decade is GM or genetically modified mosquitoes by Oxitec. Oxitec's GM mosquitoes have just been approved April 30th, 2020 will still be heavily regulated in regards to oversight. Oxitex mosquito regulations are a prime example of agency collaboration, in which the EPA is responsible for environmental oversight 
to ensure that the mosquitoes do not cause environmental damage. The FDA is involved due to the fact that they often regulate genetically modified organisms, and the USDA will step in if the mosquitoes begin to impact the agricultural industry. Additionally, this case also displays the different variables that these agencies take into consideration when evaluating GMOs. Oxitec is obligated to provide a notification 72 hours before GM mosquito release to Florida state officials, since this is where they are being released and must heavily monitor the mosquitoes in the environment up to at least 10 weeks after the release to ensure that all of the mosquitoes have died. Despite Oxitec's recent approval, they will still be responsible to adhere to agency guidelines, and the release will be gradual under an experimental use permit issued by Florida. It is important to note that Oxitec is not able to release GM mosquitoes in other states until the other states also issue an experimental use permit. But this is not likely to occur for a while considering it took Oxitec over a decade to prepare for a release in Florida alone. This is just one example of why it is important for companies to understand agency regulations and why it is important for companies and research groups to work well with agencies. To recap, we learned about the three primary regulatory agencies, the FDA, EPA, and USDA, as well as some of the factors that these agencies consider when making regulatory decisions. We also learned that the FDA, EPA, and USDA have to work together when making certain regulatory decisions to do what is best for public health and the environment. Finally, we learned about Oxitec's genetically modified mosquito release and the factors involved in this.